You're tuning in to Stellar Cycles, hosted by Alina Salza and Eva Brown. Join us weekly as we delve into the science, spirituality, and cultural significance of our feminine cycles. Get ready to align with your natural rhythms, take charge of your patterns, and embrace a holistic approach to feminine wellness. Are all systems go? All systems are go. Ah, hi. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stellar Cycles. We have another guest on with us today, and I'll let Eva introduce this one. We have Miss Katie. Katie, what's your last name? Rose. Katie Rose. I love that. Katie Rose. I actually met Katie a week ago at a (laughs) private members club that we're both so proud to be a part of. And she was hosting a masterclass for us on functional medicine, which as you'll know, something my heart lights up for. And we're really excited to have her a week later here to share with us functional medicine, really diving deeper into how we can eat to sustain our lifestyle and balance our hormones specifically. We think this will be a great episode for us to launch into our diet series of the menstrual the menstrual phase. Uh, Katie, thank you so much for being on with us. You're a well of information at the masterclass. I don't know if you noticed, but I was taking so many (laughs) notes on my phone shamelessly. (laughs) Everything you were saying, I was just eating it up. Well, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, ladies. I was very flattered and honored. And I love this conversation. I can't get enough of it. I'm happy to share everything I know. I think I said in the masterclass And I say it a lot, which is it's like having a really delicious plate in front of you and you take a fork and you hand it to somebody and you're like, you got to try this. (laughs) I feel like all this information is just like, you got to know this exists. That's exactly how we are too. We could talk about all of this for hours. Yeah. And our listeners. I mean, eventually I think it'll set in and they'll be like, a year ago, those really passionate ladies told me about taking care of my body. Maybe I should listen. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think, you know, it's all that tipping point, right? Where the world is changing the way we view our bodies, the way we honor our health. Mm. Things are, are changing. And I think it's, you know, just the enlightenment is coming, the clarity it's all in that direction. So, yeah. you know, being being a messenger in that and helping to plant a seed that may not take hold today in somebody, yeah. but it'll add up and it'll it'll get watered and fertilized and it'll yes. grow and sprout. Yes, you're truly a light worker. Yeah. This work is spreading light mm-hmm. and it is hard work. I'm glad you're doing it. Oh, well, thank mm-hmm. you so much. How did you get started in this line of work? What's your story? How did your background lead you to this place today? Okay. Well, I'm a functional medicine health coach certified as such. My background as, as you know, from the master class I taught, um, you know, I was just a, a really sick little girl and <laughs> I know, well, yeah, it's just, it's the way it was. I, everything from digestive problems and mental health problems and emotional problems, scattered brain fog issues. Um, you know, I, I remember just like, I felt like every element that could come along, I'd have. And I, every winter, I would be sick with major respiratory issues. And then once I started my period, which started at age 10, you know, and I and I had very large breasts by age 10, right? Say, so can we say, mm-hmm. like, the hormones in our foods? Can Seriously. we? <laughs> right? And so large breasts and menstruating at age 10 and the first three days of every period, especially the first two, I would be on the toilet with a trash can in my lap, diarrhea and vomiting, like TMI, but that's the truth of it. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't keep anything down. So I would miss two to three days of school every month. Yeah. Just extreme cramps and misery. And, you know, and and so kind of relating that to the hormone health and then going on, I had, because of food scarcity issues where I grew up and the psychological issues in my household, there was just a lot of trauma around food. And, you know, we were growing up on like government commodities and welfare at at a certain Mm -hmm. point. And that whole process of food substances, not real nourishing food combined with you know, an oversaturation of antibiotics. And like I had, you know, because of the environment I was in, 
I was introduced to laxatives at age seven and was taking copious amounts of laxatives and ibuprofen and Tylenol and all these things. Amen. So just totally explosion wreck of everything that could be in toxin wise and no awareness of, of what we put on our skin or what we use for our sanitary products, you know, understanding that all these things have certain toxicities that we weren't regulating. We were just getting by. And so for me, it's been a long story of being very, very sick. And then because of a lot of the emotional and abusive natures of my youth, I ended up then becoming bulimic for 15 years. And so long story with that. Naturally. Yeah. You know, the natural Mm -hmm. sequence of being unworthy, feeling unworthy. And so then going through all of that and having my 20s and 30s, I was morbidly obese, depressed and stuck in bed for weeks at a time, getting fired from jobs, not able to articulate myself or communicate the true nature of my my mental capacity, oh. my light, my aliveness mm-hmm. now, the how sharp and you know, I still have some brain fog, but oh. man, I can get it done, right? <laughs> you know, and so <laughs> So all of those functions just weren't there. And I continued to get sicker and sicker, eventually discovered functional psychology through Dr. Daniel Amen, And that was amazing because I started understanding where and when and how I placed food in my life, it would impact my mental health. And so growing up with the food scarcity, one story I tell is going to bed with an empty stomach wasn't an option. That was a a PTSD experience, going to bed with a hungry or empty stomach. So I regularly ate before going to bed as a comfort to my nervous system. To kind of convince yourself that that's not your reality anymore? It was like a familiar safety. Who knows? I didn't even think about it, right? It's never reassurance of like, I'm not in survival. I actually do have food in my stomach. We know the survival mechanism from food scarcity Mm -hmm. is hoarding, taking in, consuming. So, you know, that was just comfort mechanism. I always ate a lot. I had hit a point in my morbid obesity that every day was filled with either I, every minute I describe as I was either thinking about how to get food, what food I'm going to get, what I'm hungry for, what I'm craving, eating it or feeling guilty for it. Mm -hmm. So every, it was total food addiction, total dopamine, constant chase. Sounds tiring. Yeah. Yeah. And then hiding and the embarrassment and the also tiring, you know, parking lot outside of some yucky restaurant. And, you know, it's just very much the addiction lifestyle. And so obviously that begat a lot of health problems and furthered my conditions, furthered mental health instability, furthered stomach issues, discovered Daniel Amen, Dr. Daniel Amen, like I said, and with him, I realized, okay, well, okay, I can't get rid of food at bedtime yet. I'm not emotionally ready for that. But if I switch it to a protein instead of a carbohydrate, my brain chemistry is going to have a different response in the morning. And I'm going to be a a little more effective tomorrow than I was today. So I started moving that dial a smidge a day. Also, (laughs) side note. I know you like that phrase. I love it at you. (laughs) I love the smidge a day. It's something I'm very attached to as well. It's just doing, I always say the little things add up. And by the way, Miss Katie actually has a podcast called A Smidge a Day. (laughs) Such a great name. I did just want to ask you, you mentioned you were on the toilet. You had all these crazy symptoms for someone who had just started their period, right? Were you prepared in any way for this by any family members, whether it's from school, friends? Did you like know what to expect or was it just like this traumatizing new thing happening to you? My my mom had also gotten her period young. And so she she kind of in a she started preparing me really early for that. I remember starting to learn what a period was by age seven, six or seven. And I think part of that was because I was actually showing like a little bit on my chest by age seven or eight. And that must have been hard too, because you're still a little kid, you know, yeah. but people will start looking at you differently. Yeah. I didn't have the awareness of what was going on there. Also, I think it was a little bit of like 
I was carrying a little bit of weight. Also, I do think that the hormones in the in the feeds and and at dairy were part of it. And then, you know, I think too, so she was started kind of preparing me at like age seven and I knew it hurt. I knew that I would, you know, bleed and I knew that I would need pads. And, you know, so generally speaking, I knew it was, I knew what it was. Uh, What was interesting was we were staying by ourselves. We had a family on the property near us. So we, I was in the house by myself. She had gone on a a short trip. And so my mom wasn't around and I went to school one day and it happened and I was in the fifth grade. And so that was kind of, you know, we didn't prepare for me to get it in the fifth grade. And so there was that part of it. Yeah, that makes sense. So you weren't really prepared for like you were kind of getting prepared for it but the moment that it happened it was still yeah yeah and I it was funny I remember it was a girl from school who had an older sister who knew what to do and she kind of like in that instant yeah well in that instant she was like oh I've got this and she just kind of stepped up to like yeah and got and the school had supplies and And so, and we even had a field trip that day. So I was wearing my jacket around my waist Mm -hmm. and I was achy and miserable. And I remember it was rainy and cold. And so I was just miserable on this field trip. But it was funny because she was kind of the mean girl, (laughs) but she totally stepped up to that that day. And she was like, oh, this girl's in trouble and this is a private situation and I'm going to be there for her. And it was... Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, yeah, no more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love seeing a hero, though, right? Yeah. Like, especially when it is, like, quote unquote, the mean girl, where even, yeah, because you know, when, like, everyone's going, when, when you're at war, when you're going through something hard, like, anyone, it's relatable, right? So, of course, the mean girl can soften her heart yeah. and be like, oh, I went through that too. I can understand how hard it is. Let me help you. Well, and her nice. thing was she had seen her older sister go through it. Mm. So, she, I think she just, you know, That's and, so sweet. and it was kind of funny. Band it was, together. Yeah, it was like it was, uh, you know, private girl information. And it was like she just kind of buttoned up and stepped up and was, you know, for the rest of the day, like was taking care of, you know, and I remember her just so like cute. kind of staying attached to me. And <laughs> <laughs> you needed a friend in that moment. Yeah. yeah. And it was funny because my best, best friend was kind of like, I don't know what to do. With she this. And, to do. And why is this person all of a sudden showing up to be your, your bestie, you know? <laughs> but it was, you know, it was there and it was needed. So <laughs> thanks for sharing that yeah. story. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also wondering about... I ask this question because I know there's a lot of us that are, we're sick, we're uncomfortable, we're uncomfortable, but we don't know why. And we don't know what information we need to help get us to a better path. How did you find Daniel? Like, So the whole, the whole thing was, I like to refer back to your deep knowing. We all know our greatness. We all know our potential for health, wellness, clarity of mind. And I had such a deep desire that I would have a better story, that my days would be better. I believed in myself to be more. There was so much of the world that I believed that it was the lie of you're not enough and you're just a fat girl. And I guess you'll always stay a fat girl and all these things. But there was a part of me that I was like, well, whether I'm I'm fat and fit into jeans better or not, I want my mind to work. I want to be a fully functional. I want to go to work and be the person I believe that I can be. And so there was a propensity always in me. I mean, at age 11, I'm reading, I'm okay, you're okay. At age 15, I'm reading, you're erroneous. So like, there's always this calling. And I just want to call out to everybody that is in you. You, when you look in the mirror and there's the spark in you that you know is there, that you're afraid to admit, that's the truth. All the other stuff is not the truth. The truth is your great knowing that you are more, you are worthy. Mm -hmm. There is more for you. And so because of that, I just had a calling, a desire to find these resources that would show me. Like I remember being 
Oh gosh, in high school and buying Tony Robbins CDs <laughs> I love because it. I was like, you know, so I just desired a better story. And so that started. So the Daniel Amen, I was couch potato surfing and saw him on a PBS speaker cool. series. It resonated with me because he was talking about ADHD and anxiety and depression and all these disorders. And I was like, wait, Without an investment and without taking more psych meds, which I was on plenty, I can move the dial on my brain function just in the timing and where and how I put food. And so something that you could control right away. Right away, right away, right away. And that ability to move the dial with just a choice at bedtime. Okay, well, instead of having cookies at bedtime, I'm going to have a yogurt. Now, in hindsight, the yogurt I was choosing still had a lot of sugar, but at least it had some protein. (laughs) Right. So I was, you know, moving the dial gently. And so over time, seeing that move, I was able to make a lot of choices. And what eventuated was the weight loss. Mm -hmm. But before that, it was the mental health that was showing up at work in a way that commanded the Mm -hmm. space. And so then later, much later to kind of answer your question. Eventually I'll get to the answer of how I got into this work. But so much later I was doing quite a bit better with mental health, still quite a bit of brain fog, but you know, much, much more presentable. The weight I had dropped 90 pounds. So like all these things were really progressing, but I always had some gut problems. I always had a little brain fog. I seemed to be very susceptible to illnesses and continued menstrual crisis. Mm -hmm. And at this point, so that's my late 30s, I'm 38 there. I'd been on birth control for 20 years, which we now know completely messes up and hijacks our hormone health. Also, life and we don't know about it. Our gut microbiome, it it just (laughs) is so the worst thing ever. Uh, But anyway, I had a sinus infection and took a high dose of antibiotics. And six months later, I couldn't walk across the room without collapsing (laughs) because of my compromised microbiome from all the havoc before I had wiped out the last of the good gut bugs and I had nine, um, uh, nine overgrowths four of which went pathogenic, attacking my blood, my liver, my thyroid. So scary. I ended up in liver failure. And it was really hard for the medical community to figure out what was going on with me. And it was one doctor after another. And I couldn't lift blankets off my body because they were too heavy. I couldn't ask for help because nobody could hear me because I was too weak to yell. And finally landed in a functional medicine practitioner's office. That's when I met functional medicine. Six weeks later, I'm feeling great, starting to really turn it around, took several years of healing. But through that, I became entrenched in this empowerment (laughs) that we can heal our body. We can. And, you know, got off the birth control, started moving the dial on a whole bunch of stuff. And so, yeah. 90 pounds, you were feeling great about that. That still didn't fix the gut situation that you've been living with your whole life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the gut situation impacted the hormone health and all of that impacted the mental health. So it's just a big stew pot, right? Big situation. Yeah. It takes years to work through, as you know, these situations. It takes years to get into these situations. And a lot of times it happens in childhood, whether if we had a great childhood or a decent one, at the end of the day, our parents all just did the best they could with what they had. And what they had back then was not these psychology books. It was not YouTube. It was these wild like store box cereals and canned potatoes. Advertised. Yes. Pesticides. That was, yeah, it was money backed. Mm -hmm. No one had any idea. They were like, we're healthy. You're going to be fine too. And then of course, and it wasn't the information age. There wasn't YouTube. There wasn't the internet. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There wasn't cell phones. There, no. you know, like there library was books. no access. You're yeah. going to go to the library and the few books about diet that it might have, those books we would never yeah. take advice from now. Yeah. Yeah. Also, find trust of the people too, that if someone is 
manufacturing a product, putting it out on the shelves that must be good for me. Right? Yeah. Yes. DuPont, better living through science. And now uh-huh. we understand how all that chemistry has hijacked the system or Monsanto was such a great name in the 70s and 80s. And now it has completely ruined the soils of America. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing. I have such a big pet peeve on our, our soil conditions. Yeah. I believe that God set up this world to self be self-sufficient yeah. so we have to compost and nu- like put nutrients yeah. back into the ground and now we're just eating fruits and vegetables that are 20 percent less yeah. potent for us and this is why magnesium which is a mental health and yeah. a digestive benefit you can't get through food it's depleted mm-hmm. but you know take your vitamins guys yeah <laughs> yeah well and the, you know as far as that goes there is hope because if we let the chicken be the chicken and be in the pasture the nitrates from or the um nitrogen from their urine the them mm-hmm. pecking at the ground mm-hmm. these things you know these types of farming traditional farming will take us back to i that, love that so. you said that you let the chicken be the chicken mm-hmm. let the world be how it's supposed to operate yeah, and naturally maybe. it will take us back to a good homeostasis yeah not industry mm-hmm. but yeah but all of these things to bring it back is all of it connects to hormone health and there's so many things that I would love to share with you guys and your audience on the daily tactics that we can do to correct and align our hormone health. I know you guys are really good about looking at the phases and the behaviors and you know, there's, there's, uh, there's an intuition and there's a knowing, and we've all gotten so away from our intuitive eating, intuitive movement, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a, a really funny Instagram account called Rubio Fuerte. Do you guys know him? Absolutely. He's in the white t-shirt and he's the big Brutus kind of guy in a white t-shirt. And his whole thing is he gets on there. He's really right in the screen, very kind of like bold man energy, muscle bound. And he's got a little bit of an accent and he talks about women's faces. And the, he's hysterical. And he's like... He says it in this monotone, you think this and it is incorrect. You must do this. And I don't know if he's Austrian or what I'm hearing, but he's hysterical. And it's so true. I mean, I haven't seen anything he said that isn't true, but it has to do with like one of my favorites is you want to watch Netflix and eat before your period. There's a reason. And, you know, honoring the fact that you are, you know, getting ready to release and bleed and your body's preparing that you actually need more nourishment, more you're, you know, supporting that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and then we go back to the magnesium deficiency. Well, the number one craving for chocolate is supported by replacing it with magnesium. So it's like these, your body is craving things for a reason. And your body's talking to you constantly. It's always sending you little messages and it's our intuition that leads us to the answer that tells us what's the right food to naturally grab and what is the movement that our body needs at this moment. And for women in particular, and that's why I think it's so powerful that we are um, synced to the phases of the moon, to our body, to the world, is because by by being connected in that way, I think it naturally helps us fall into our intuition, which is a power that men don't necessarily have in the same way as women do. Well, and you know, it's something that, you know, when you talk about that, I think about the divine feminine and the divine masculine Mm -hmm. and, you know, let the chicken be the chicken, but let the man be the man, let the the woman be the woman and, you know, enable, uh, enable that authenticity. And, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, we have as women, in many respects become these steamroller energies and it's interfering vibrationally hormonally or pheromones yeah Mm -hmm. it's interfering with the man's ability to release his space and be where he Mm -hmm. is and you know i know that there's a lot of talk about toxic masculinity but you know the the inverse of that in the world of social media is the karen you know and the karen's (laughs) tired she's so tired don't we all feel bad for the karen like (laughs) I have it's so many close Karen friends. She's, she's, yeah, that's only you know, and so yeah, I feel bad whenever I say the Karen, but but I don't like. I just feel like there's the energy of those two cartoon characters that social media has created, 
And they're both coming from fear and fatigue, right? Everybody needs a nap. Just go take a nap. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Rest is restorative. Your hormones are out of balance. So true. Go take a nap, take a breather, and, you know, just allow, allow and trust. And, you know, do, does the woman who feels that she has to do everything, is that her heart's desire? Is that what Mm -hmm. she prefers? No. No. Or is that what she's been told over? receive or be worthy of love yeah it's the should don't should on me like right you know it's like this is the should and you know and and the man is so tapped out from dealing with the woman who has so many shoulds who's burnt out yeah and she never can be and and this is where even the cross female negativity frenemy comes from is that the journey of i resent you because I should of something and I did it because I should have. And I see you over there not doing that. And my perception is you're not upholding your end of this exhausting bargain that we've all bought into. (laughs) My goodness. Seriously, I think the thing that jealousy or envy stems from is the feeling that you also want that thing and you feel like you should have it. How come I don't have it? That person has it. But why jealousy can be a really good thing is it can show you what do you want? Like why you feel that you you are lacking that thing that that person has. Do you feel that you are also worthy of it and you could also have it? Yeah. Like that feeling just turns into hate towards the other person rather than how can I also bring that into my life? And we bring that into all our relationships, mm-hmm. male and female. I said that envy is really, or resentment is really envy. So when we boil and fester resentment, it's that I envy that you can get away with Mm -hmm. not dealing with this problem Mm -hmm. right now. Instead of creating the terms, okay, I'll give you a great example. In our home, we've had a lot of moving parts in the last couple of years. My husband had a lot of work stuff going on. I was trying to pick up the slack and I'm very much obviously a big believer in what we eat. And so I really came to a place where I was handling all the meals, all the meal preparation, all the table placement, all these things were happening. And he's like focused on what he's doing. And I'll say, okay, it's ready. And I, I have a big hang up. I want hot food. I just have a hang up. Same thing. Yeah, I do. When I announce it, it's time, past time. And, (laughs) and, you know, and then I'm finding myself doing multiple trips and we have his adult son that is, has, is disabled. He has autism. So he's like a permanent kiddo. We'll always have that we have him part custody Mm -hmm. of. So the two of them, I'm like doing multiple plates to the table, multiple glasses to the table, all the silverware, all the linens. And I'm sharing that you know, hello, somebody could get these things and I'm getting resentful, right? Mm -hmm. And what I realize is that I can just sit down and start eating and their plates Mm -hmm. just a few steps away at the counter. They'll come when they're ready. They'll get their food. Mm -hmm. They'll get their food. They're not going to not, yeah, they're not going to not, you know, and I, and it was a matter of, so am I going to chew and bark and bicker? Mm -hmm. Because it's not important to him. And Mm -hmm. I love him. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. He's perfect in so every way. And I'm going to make a deal out of this and I'm going to let resentment fester. And so that I think is part of the journey too, is like, what do I prefer in in that question enables me to do what I want for me. And then I let everything else go to the side. And that's kind of like an old like example as far as woman's Mm -hmm. position, but there's something in every household, in every relationship, in every friendship that you have a pinch that that person is doing a certain way. Well, is it really that you have attachment to how they should be doing it? Mm -hmm. Let that go. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. The rest will work itself out. Yes. The work is always with yourself and you take your responsibility of what you can change and what you can control and everything else what's in someone else's world. You just let that be in their world because it's an uphill battle if you just want to change and yes and say, hey, like this is the way I've always done it. Why aren't you doing it that way? Well, that's just not the world we live in. (laughs) And who wants to be in a relationship with somebody that wants to control you? Mm -hmm. You now become a less attractive woman. And you want them to have those different attributes. Because what makes makes a great relationship is two separate people coming in that are very unique, coming into union. And this is for friendships, partnerships, or relationships. 
coming into the union with their own unique ways at approaching life. Yeah. That's when you can divide and conquer, you know? But once we try to change them and make them like, why aren't you like me? It's so irritating. It's like, whoa, you stopped loving them for why you wanted to be with them to begin with. Exactly. Abraham Hicks calls it co-creative. Yeah. It's you come together in collaboration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take us through the journey and the timeline between that thought, I want to get into this world of functional healing and functional medicine and the steps that it took you to get to where you are today. You know, it was a conveyor belt. It was really, it took me. I didn't take it. I started getting well and I started feeling excited and powerful and I could not get enough information about functional medicine and the ability for us to reset our bodies. And so it became like breath. I couldn't get enough. I just needed more air. And so I I started studying it more and more and started living it more and more. And to go from obese and struggling to sick and dying to thriving and joyful and powerful, that was visible to the world around me. And that was visible to friends and family and social media. And so at that point, after a while, I just would talk about all these things. It was my passion. My social media became like my, my, yeah, my diary or the bulletin board in your bedroom when you're in high school. It's just all the things I love to collect and I would repost them. And so I started having people reach out to me for questions and for guidance. And then that was just fun and sharing then they started wanting to pay me for my time. And that was kind of squeamish because I didn't feel like I deserved that. And I loved the conversation and I felt like I was taking on some level, but grew and my comfort with really spending time with people in a consultative space grew. And I really started to realize I know a ton, like I know so much. And then I, as I'm looking at people, I'm realizing okay, we have a problem here. Nutrition is personalized, but medical nutrition is extremely personalized. And we don't know your labs. I could say everybody, and this is my favorite one I go to, which is I could say everybody should have an avocado a day. Well, if you're having a histamine intolerance that's undiagnosed, that's an activating food. Mm -hmm. So something as benign and innocent and seemingly healthy, you know, and so I really got into a place where I was realizing I need, I need more data. I need to be in partnership with somebody who would run the labs. So then I started looking at supporting functional medicine practitioners. And that's when I went for a year long programming for certification as a functional medicine health coach. And that was great. That was going to help me to have a better relationship to where we could kind of send them upstream, get the labs. Yeah. Yeah. And could be recognized and received by professionals, not just my peers. And so I did that. And what was great and validating about that is I realized in that programming that I knew more about functional medicine than my teachers and cohorts. And that I was like, yeah, I was literally having side program classes where I was telling and talking and sharing because I was like, well, there, this is, this isn't as full in this information category. So that was great. And I started realizing, okay, I want to send people to a functional medicine practitioner first, get the labs, get the protocols, and then I'm going to support that with lifestyle and behavior habits. And and my coaching work aspect is motivational interviewing, positive psychology, cognitive behavioral therapy, and really sitting with people in their strengths. So that was great. Problem is there was less time and resources for the functional medicine practitioners. I'd send somebody to someone and they'd be like, oh, well, I specialize in this and I can't see them or I do women only, or it's a six month wait, or great, my first consultation is $600. And that's before they even get any care. And so that was really problematic for me. And so in recent years, I've partnered with uh, a clinical care team where I actually have employed them Mm -hmm. to run the labs, do the reviews. So it's doctors and nurses running the labs and doing the reviews, but not the whole practice situation, but we're able to get that and go off of that information in-house. And so 
that's kind of the recent turn of things, but that's the journey. And now I can sit with people knowing what's under the hood, right? To get them back to their factory standard settings, right? I think we've all been there. See, like, you know, trying something different, having to pay like three or $400, not really getting much information out of it. So I, I think a lot of people can relate to it's you know tough. How frustrating that is because you're really just trying to get to the root of whatever it is that's making you sick. But here you are, you know, paying for this. They're telling you there's nothing wrong with your blood, but you're like, I feel off. Yes. I was in full liver failure and the medical system was missing it. Mm. I was dying. Yeah. I was emaciated and couldn't lift blankets off my body and they couldn't figure it out. Colon or colonoscopies and mm -hmm. blood work and all these panels, but the depth and it's just the misfortunate mm -hmm. thing is the, the current medical complex is mm -hmm. just too limiting. And the, the, because of the way insurance works, it interrupts the, you know, the access to full deep dive into your labs. I'd like to add to this because it's something we see a lot in traditional medicine, where I think in traditional medicine, doctors are taught how to fix problems, not necessarily prevent them from happening. And what happens is when you have a chronic patient, and I speak a lot on this because my father passed away from a lot of chronic okay. illnesses. Right. And this is really how my story came to be, why I'm so passionate about health now, is because after going through his entire life in the healthcare world traditionally they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him yeah. they, it would be two years doing all these different tests I'm so sorry and this is why i thank you <laughs> yeah no that i wear that like mm -hmm. i really that is deep in my heart because i was that patient and so many of my colleagues have your story yes. of a long spirit unnecessarily yes and it's either that or or they're going through it themselves and they yeah. don't know what's wrong they don't know where to turn the amount of books that they would have to read just to understand the problem and you're going to the hospital you're really looking for help trying to self-advocate and they don't really know yeah. anyway it's very frustrating and this is why we on Stellar Cycles podcast, we're always advocating for preventative health measures, yes. contacting people like Katie, looking for functional medicine. Getting ahead of it while you yes. Yeah. You mentioned self-advocating. Most people don't even know that they have to self-advocate. Or that they have that right. They just get in there. They're like, these people know what's best for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to question this or that because a lot of them, they don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm from a scientific background only because I went to school for ultrasound. But, and I know some of these things, but majority of people, they have no, not even a single clue, you know, and I yeah. really do see them, you know, being taken advantage of in the system. Um, not necessarily that the doctors or nurses are malicious in any way, but just a lot don't of the know. time, they the, don't know. Yeah, they don't the machine is just yeah, they don't got the time. Yeah. They also are not, they might go to extracurricular curricular conventions, but typically it's for the medical, for a medical standard. It's yeah. not necessarily... Yeah. Well, and preventative, is, which would be considered Eastern medicine, which we'll get into. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and this is even my problem with labs. Even when I'm pulling and reviewing with somebody labs from like a lab core, you know, I'm like, like I said, I have this wonderful partnership that makes sure that I'm in my lane because that's really important to me, mm -hmm. right? I need to stay in my lane. Mm -hmm not only liability for my business, but these are people's lives. This is their bodies. I care yeah. too much to have any ego in this. So bringing in that outside partner, but even in those labs that we're reviewing, this, the standard, the recommended number is way too high. You know, it's like, this is not, this is keeping you from dying, not they're, thriving. They're comparing you against like, Really sick. Yeah, mm -hmm. the group of sick. That's so the C, the this average. C this is the group student. of sick, and you're within that range of the group you're of sick. Great. And your check engine lights are starting to come on. It's yeah. saying, hey, change the oil. Hey, change the windshield wiper fluid. Change this. And yeah. like, you can only ignore those for so it's long. So true. Know, your body's fine. Trying. Yes. Oh, yes. This is the perfect segue into the next topic. Oh, we just flew right into it. Okay. <laughs> we wanted to ask you about about Western medicine, and what is your take on the differences between Western and Eastern medicine? Well, what I love is how much the Western medicine, it's funny. Okay, so there's quote unquote, alternative health, which mm -hmm. really is kind of like historic ancestral health, right? Food is medicine, Hippocrates. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if 
we have right now, the healthcare system should be called the eternal alternative. Method, it's right? true. Not, not the one that's been in place. All of humanity. Yeah. So, you know, um, it's, it's interesting because I'm not a student of Eastern medicine. Mm -hmm. I am a consumer and recipient sometimes of Eastern medicine. I really, I'm starting to dive into the Ayurvedic practices. You know, I have a, a, an appreciation for the meridians. That's how I actually, I love meridians. yeah, actually started claiming, I think my liver's bad. I think it's my liver because the liver meridian that runs the point right in front of your rib, it just was so tender all the time. It was an odd aching mm -hmm. sharpness, like a little hot dagger. So there's things that, you know, I love the study of looking at your tongue to tell you, like if you yeah. have scalloped edges on your tongue, you can see that you're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. If you have creasing and all these things, and looking at face mapping, you know, we can see so much about someone's health and their inner wellness through their face. And I always say, and so this is where it goes back to Eastern medicine. I always say that our body is a biofeedback machine. Yes. And so whether those little check engine lights are going off in my hair and my nails are really brittle. I'm starting mm -hmm. to have a little alopecia. Mm -hmm. I'm breaking out a ton. I have super dry skin. I, you know, have some weird bathroom habits. <laughs> You know, like all these little things, we have a million check engine mm -hmm. lights mm -hmm. and we mask them with products that make it worse with toxins, right? Yes, the medicine. So, so the, you know, for me, the Eastern medicine is really good at paying attention to this biofeedback machine that we have. And I say to people all the time, every day, I want you to look at your feet. I want to know, do you see the bones? Do your toes look wrinkled like you're dehydrated? Mm -hmm. What's the coloring in your feet? What's happening around your mm -hmm. ankles? Do the bones? Yes. You know, oh, this, this is, is so important. Yeah. It's, this is information. It's your face. When mm -hmm. you wake up in the morning, is there a puffiness? Do you have a sheen mm -hmm. to your skin? You know, all these beautiful vanity efforts, use them for health. Mm -hmm. And so while I'm not student of Eastern medicine, it's a huge and beautiful tool. And there's so many techniques and the acupuncture and the acupressure and things that we can use to tap into the flow of our energy. Mm -hmm. I do practice Qigong and I I've really love times, the ability yeah. to work with my own energy, mm -hmm. energy flow and the state of being mm -hmm. and being present. But in contrast to Western medicine, what I love that I'm seeing right now is a massive quantity of traditional, quote unquote, traditional medical doctors mm -hmm. are enrolling in the Institute of Functional Medicine. Yes, they love to see it. And they are realizing that they are not helping their patients live well. Mm -hmm. They expect better for themselves and their family members. And now mm -hmm. they expect better for their patients. Absolutely. Taking it further because we already know how much schooling a doctor has to go through and the residency. And mm -hmm. so much of it sucks. And it's not this glorified thing that you know everyone's taught that it is so to know that there's people who are like you know what this isn't about just the money and pushing drugs for me that there are some doctors who are like taking those extra schooling steps to go and get certified in the integrative medicine i'm actually checking out school right now for me uh -huh. i want to do that as well so yeah I've, I've been scrolling through and there's like doctor after doctor that's like you know testimonials about why they decided to further yeah. their education this way and it's really because they want to be able to help their patients they're seeing <laughs> that the system that they bought into or that they were taught this is the right path to go you know your family's gonna be so proud of you if you go to medical school if you'll be a doctor but they get there and they're like I'm not able to help people in the way that i want to help yeah them. So yeah it's amazing that they're taking the steps it's brilliant. And I can't say enough about the Institute of Functional Medicine. IFM is brilliant. Originally out of the Cleveland Clinic, mm -hmm. Dr. Jeffrey Bland started it in the Cleveland mm -hmm. Clinic in the 90s after seeing and really wanting to fix true, true health. And going back to Hippocrates, mm -hmm. food is medicine. And, you know, we take the doctors take the Hippocratic Oath and it's, you know, first do no harm. And, you know, realizing that this has become compromised with our current system. But I will say, I vehemently believe in triage medicine. So, you know, if something is such, you cannot, if it is, it, if it is an in a state that you cannot turn the dial quick enough to save a person or tend to them and shift, you know, I would, 
you know, go to the emergency room for a broken leg. There's a you know, there's, yeah. Hardly any of them are like true emergencies. Yeah. Most of them are people who, I'll be honest, didn't take care of themselves during their life. Yes. And now they're here sitting in the emergency room for 20 hours for a tummy ache and racking up, you know, these crazy bills, uh, insurance, this and that. I mean, I could go on and on. Yeah. The the majority of acute illnesses, right, are, are just lifestyle illnesses. Mm -hmm. So there's very little right now that is actually not a lifestyle illness from diabetes to gout to you know, yeah, just, yeah, run the gamut. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, as far as traditional medicine goes, I, I think there's a time and a place and I love what I'm seeing a lot of really inspired doctors do. Let's get into the importance of doing the right laboratory work. I know we kind of brushed over this when yeah. we talked about how sometimes, you know, you'll be feeling off and you'll go and get blood work done and they're like, you're fine. So Talk a little bit more about why it's so important to know exactly what kind of tests to ask for, you know, if, whether someone goes to the doctor or whether they go with the functional med medical approach. So my first thought on that has a lot to do with the cost for insurance to run labs. Mm -hmm. So if, so I, this organization that I partner with for clinical support, they are they include a lab warehouse. And so it's a whole long list of things that you can get pulled. And one of the best things that they ever shared with me is we don't work with insurance because, for instance, if you're running the TSH numbers on thyroid, that costs $18 for that one data point. If we run it through insurance, it costs $300. So the problem right now is that we don't have a system that helps people to mitigate pain out of pocket, mm -hmm. but insurance won't approve a long list of, of labs mm -hmm. because the cost is so prohibitive to the insurance system and their, and their ability to make it an income. Mm -hmm. So if we now go, okay, well, I'm going to just get a few numbers. So there are times where I've talked to nurses active nurses who are in the medical system who have thyroiditis or Hashimoto's. And I've heard they ran their TSH. And I was like, what about your T3, your T4? What about this? What about this? And I'll give a whole long line in there. And I'm like, did you take a Dutch test, which is a very comprehensive test? And they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm going to a thyroid specialist. So this is, this is the problem with that system. It costs too much money for that system to run an intensive review of what's going on. And I, I used to say, it's so easy to go get a diagnostic done on your car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put on your body. We can't look under the hood even, right? Mm -hmm. And so with that, it, with functional medicine practitioners, there is the understanding that we need all the data points. We need as many data points as we can get. And it's working in partnership with client or patient to ensure that, you know, it's, uh, was it you or somebody else at the class that said, um, you know, how, what, what, no, I think it was a gentleman that was sitting next to you, Eva, that said, you know, what all do you recommend? Well, it's based on the symptomatology. So I'm not going to run somebody through a thyroid and hormone panel if they're having just inflammation and just, you know, microbiome issues, right? right? So that's where it's getting into very personalized care, right? What would you say is the basics? Like just someone's coming to you with traditional thing, maybe brain a slight fog, brain, fl stuff. yes, inflammation, yeah. stomach. So right. My, my favorite is I have the group that I work with, they have a 31 data point that's blood and urine. And it can really give some of those like smoking gun arrows of look over here, look under this rock next kind of mm. response. So it has the inflammatories, it has, you know, showing how you're, you're processing your iron. Is there a lot right. of iron in your system, but it's not usable iron, mm. you know, looking at your blood sugar levels, you know, really understanding. And I'm trying to say all of these terms in a way that are receivable by the general public. Thank you. So, you know, making it something that we can look at all the different modalities and mechanisms of your body and the usage of your body. And so that's a, a long list on that one. 
I love the Dutch test for hormone health specifically. Okay. So the Dutch test is going to look at, you know, the full panel of estrogen and testosterone and progesterone. And it's going to look at your cortisol levels. It's going to look at your full thyroid panel. And it's going to really understand what's going with, on with all of that. So the Dutch test is great. And that one's really great because it is an advancement in testing that you get it drop shipped to your house and you actually just use the little strips to, uh, no urine. So urine. I love that even more. Yeah. And so for a full 24 hour cycle, you're capturing little bits of urine on these little strips. Because your cortisol spikes higher in the morning time. Exactly. Yeah. And it's cool. And you're always fatigued. Yeah. We now know why. That's so accurate. Yeah. So yeah. I love the topic of cortisol specifically because everybody demonizes cortisol. Mm-hmm. Thinking, it does have its purpose, yeah, like everything. It, it absolutely. You just does. don't want too much of it for too it's long nice. or at the wrong time. Put your adrenals into fatigue because they're constantly mm-hmm. cortisol. And exactly. Not like replenishing that, right? Exactly. You know, doing a GI map. So if somebody's having gut issues, food sensitivities. So doing a GI map to understand what's happening with the microbiome. What's, is is something asleep down there? And do we need to wake something up and kill something and, you know, get, minimize something and get rid of something? And do we need to do a detox? And I'm going to be doing that here soon because I just like, I don't get it. I'm like having breakouts around my chin and jaw. I've never had this before in my yeah. life. You know, like really deep kind of pimples that aren't pimples. Anyways, I don't talk about my ailments, but you know, I, yeah. I'm heading in that path. But if you're just doing it on your own, which I, you know, me and Eva were kind of starting to research all these hormonal tests and gut tests, but it's like, where do you even start? You know, you could be spending four or five hundred dollars for each of them yes and that's where and there like yeah it comes into the picture and it's like we should start here first and then yeah if not here then we go there right exactly and it can be a stair step now i have some patients well, they're not patients to me they're clients mm-hmm. to me but they'll come in and you know it's a matter of like well okay, what's your budget? And it's like, nope, I want to get it all done. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's exactly what's going on. But then, you know, we also have things like environmental toxin testing, Mm -hmm. mold testing, metals testing. And so what's interesting is like, you know, I have one lady that I've met with that she's like, you know, I've just been struggling with weight and fatigue for 20 years. And I've gone to a naturopath. I've had all this testing done. I've had my mold looked at. Like, can I please just run a, a tox panel on you? Mm-hmm. And that thing was a dumpster fire. It came back to- in 20 years of was all it this. Environment? It was. And because they're, you know, the forever toxins that get into your muscle tissue. Yeah. And so you need to have an intensive detoxification to help flush that. And so it was actually farming toxins. And she, you know, grew up in Iowa. I want to do all the panels. I know, right? I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Like, I, I eat know. a ton of fish. Who knows what's in the water? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just, it's about, uh, and, and there's so much we can do, and I can't wait till we get into some of the tactics around, you know, I'd love to share blood sugar management and how that's so related to hormones and skin health and all the things. And I mean, we're pretty so, much yeah. there now. We're, there. we're going to ask you, it was perfect. We're going to ask you about your women clients and what are some things that you're seeing with them you already answered okay. that please give us more yeah. and then we're going to get into some action steps that are, that our listeners can take today okay. what's the most common things that women come to you with you know maybe you can talk a little bit about age groups if there's like things that are for each specific like time in a woman's life that you see more of yeah just really get into yeah your clients. you know i have young college student clients that are tired of their menstrual cycles taking over their lives. They're tired of pain. They're tired of the fatigue around that. They're also having the challenge of uh, an unhealthy balance with their responsibility in their lives with school. Also the narrative that they have in that space. So, you know, sometimes my work is, is, you know, looking at their, you know, what's actually going on with their body. And sometimes it's, well, what's going on with your mindset that's putting your body there? Mm -hmm. The system that makes this entire circus run. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if we are paddling upstream and we're not floating on any level, we're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. If we're not working way too hard. Yeah. 
not supposed to work this mm-hmm. far. Path of least resistance and all things. Yeah. And then, you know, on the theme of not supposed to work this hard, I have clients in their 30s, female clients. And I have male and female clients, but I do have way more female clients. But I have female clients in their 30s or 40s, and they're working out so hard. They're working out like men, and they're killing their adrenals, Mm -hmm. and they're, you know, just taxing their their system and it's just so the that regarding the you know following your phase and being mm-hmm. intuitive with when and how you work out and mm-hmm. what movement should look like in the different phases mm-hmm. and these you know two a days and hitting it aggressive mm-hmm. and if you feel the resistance of going to that workout your body, your chemistry is trying to tell you, you know, I've had women say, I used to be able to work out so hard and I just can't bring myself to do it anymore. And I want to repair that. No, the reason you can't do it anymore is because it was too much for too long. We're not, women and men are just completely different bodies. In our mind, our physical, how we show up, our hormones, as you guys have seen, we're not designed to do the same thing that God made us a counterpart for. (laughs) And my caveat to this is there are women who feel great in what they're doing. That's not talking to you or about you. I'm talking about the woman who feels the strain Mm -hmm. of what she's demanding of herself. Mm -hmm. Intuitive. Pay attention, be in Congress with yourself, Mm -hmm. be in conversation with yourself. If you had a lover that you absolutely adored and they said to you, every time this happens, I feel suffering, I feel struggle, I feel frustration, I feel overwhelmed. Would you help them not do that anymore? Treat yourself like Mm -hmm. your lover. Yeah, self-love always. Yeah. And then we get into, you know, the corporate world and how women are are striving to play in that corporate world and carry familyhood and, you know, all these things. And so it just goes back to let the chicken be the chicken, you know, (laughs) be, be, you know, be true to what you are. And it's really kind of interesting because I know that we challenge this concept of, being a whole woman. And, you know, it goes back to when I really honor exactly who I am and I'm in a work environment and I say no to something, the confidence and authenticity at which I say no to something makes it so the other person accepts that no easily. Absolutely. And you don't have to justify it. You don't have to explain mm-hmm. it. No, it becomes, it becomes a truth known by all. Mm-hmm. Katie's not going to yes. do that. I'm going to need to find somebody else to do that. So when we really, really know, like, and love ourselves and we start leaning into the, what do I prefer as the question we ask for all mm-hmm. events, we get stronger in answering. Yes. Some, at first, you're like, yes. I don't know what I prefer. I've never done what I prefer. It's everybody else. You become your own best friend. Mm-hmm. You show up for yourself first. And this is something that Alina and I, so we started this podcast to really inspire women to know themselves and to stand firmly in what they say and show up authentically, yeah. empower, have that empowering yeah. presence, yeah. which I think is going to shift. It really will change the world. It's women being in that yeah, space. Absolutely. And it's a practice. And I know that not everybody starts there. And I know not everybody had the support to start there. Mm-hmm. I did not. But at one point I realized, what do I prefer? And I started asking that in every little silly thing, mm-hmm. you know, shopping, picking a piece of fruit, If I wanted to do the dishes, did I want to call that person back? And the more I asked, what do I prefer? What do I prefer? The more it populated my answers. Mm -hmm. And then I became very congruent with self. And then I became somebody who answers authentically to self. So I answer authentically to others and others accepted, liked, and Mm -hmm. agreed with it. Yeah. Sounds like building a personal rapport with yourself is so key. Right yeah. here, right? Because when you, um, I think it goes a little past like self confidence, like being confident in yourself, but I think the root of self confidence is always keeping those promises to yourself. Yeah. Right. I'm worthy of honoring what I promised right. to myself. Okay. I said I would get off work early and do these things for myself, and now I'm being compromised. Mm-hmm. I just told myself that I'm not as worthy as that. Mm-hmm. You're not worthy of the choice that your higher self would yeah. be making in the moment, right? And all of this throws off our nervous system and all of mm-hmm. this throws off our hormones. Mm-hmm. 
And all of this throws off our sleep, which now throws Mm -hmm. off more of our nervous system and more of our hormones. Yes. And we just become this robot Mm -hmm. of service and doing. We're human beings, not human doings. Everything starts in the mind. Yes. Yes. And so I work with women who are dealing with their corporate stuff, whose hormones are out of balance, and it's changing the mindset and the perspective, giving permission to be self, looking at labs that say, look right here, see, this is telling you you're not being self, Mm -hmm. fixing that, leaning in with food and function and lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. Then we get into the, (laughs) that sounded great. (laughs) I know. (laughs) And then- You know, getting into, then we get into the perimenopausal and the menopausal and the postmenopausal. And I have the pleasure of working with all those women. And then I get guys who are coming to me who just don't feel like the man they used to, Mm -hmm. you know, and like on the pelvic floor Mm -hmm. um, episode I did recently, you know, it's touching on like, well, what are the misfunctions of the bedroom? And, you know, Mm -hmm. so it's really, it's whole health, whole life, whole happiness. Yes. And and it's just a joy to get to work with all those segments of understanding we have the ability to repair at every age. Mm-hmm. So the body's main purpose is to constantly repair itself. But the things that we bombard it with just on an everyday basis and everyday life, it really gets in the way of the body just doing its own thing, repairing itself. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally steal that from this because that's exactly what I want to say to everybody all the time. It's our body's main directive. You know, when we cut our skin, it comes back together. Mm-hmm. How do we, you know, stop hijacking that mm-hmm. whole process? It's- yes. Start of this world, at the start of this life. And, you know, unfortunately, like things have happened in such ways that have brought sickness and disease and all of these ailments and malfunctions, so to speak, of the system. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, going back to the fact that the body wants to heal, it wants to help you heal. Yes. As long as you don't put things that block that process, then yeah. the body's going to work with you. And what's so interesting, at least I'm sure you see this in your patients, healing can sometimes take less time than the bombardment yeah. <laughs> and the bad decisions. Like you could have yeah. been doing this for to your body for 10 years and you could be fine in a year. Yeah. And what is your belief system in all of that? Because sometimes we're attached to the narrative of illness. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm the girl who has the breakouts. Oh, I'm the girl who has the stomach problems and that language. And we were talking mm-hmm. before the show. Eva. Yeah. yeah. You know that, you know, we know through, quantum physics, neuro, neurophysics, epigenetics, that the messaging, mm-hmm. that our cells are waiting to hear everything that we tell it. Yeah. I always use the Chill. analogy of like, uh, I always say, so you girls probably know this, but in a seven year span, every single cell in your body mm-hmm. is, is new from the previous seven mm-hmm. years, every hair on your head, everything. So if we look at a seven year span, we're putting in, we're Birthing new cells and old cells are dying off. Within that seven year span, we have the ability to tell these new cells coming mm-hmm. in what to do. I think of it as like a kid yes. coming yeah. to a new school. It's and it's there. Are they going to be influenced by the other good kids mm-hmm. or is it a bad school and they're going to be influenced by the bad kids? Yes. You know, and what's going to what's that graduating class yes. in seven years? Yes, you will get <laughs> out of life whatever it is that you think. Yeah. Simply- and, and we know this and this mm-hmm. is no longer hokey pokey or mm-hmm. mysticism. It's it's science backed and yes. evidence based. And yeah, I did want to let them know off of the subject we were just talking about. If you guys want to dive into information about this on your own, about epigenetics or how to reprogram your mind or the science of belief and how that programs your cells and can repair your neurotransmitters, uh, YouTube Joe Dispenza. He talks about this. Yeah, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Mm -hmm. He's very scientific with it too. It's Mm -hmm. not just super woo-woo and hard to wrap your mind around. Again, he marries the spirituality and the Mm -hmm. science. I'm so glad you guys brought it up. I wanted to mention it, but it's my favorite. It's kosher to do so. Everything's kosher here. (laughs) (laughs) If it's not, we still want to at least talk about it. (laughs) I agree. I agree. So to leave our listeners off with something that they can do today, right away, to increase their vitality, to increase their beauty, to increase their well-being, can you leave them with some tips? Yes. Before we go? 
my favorite. My favorite, the the daily hacks. <laughs> so number one, you cannot repair your hormones. You cannot lose weight. You cannot have clear skin. You cannot do all these things if you don't get proper sleep. So mm -hmm. if you're in a place where your body is in disrepair and you're not getting proper sleep, research, look online, Google sleep hygiene practices mm -hmm. and start weaving them in. Just pick one or two and get a little bit better at it. Can't say enough about sleep. Also, blood sugar management. So blood sugar in young hormones and aging hormones is the same chaos and crisis. It just shows up in different symptoms. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, I love the new continuous glucose monitoring systems. The Dexcom 6 has been an amazing tool with a lot of accuracy. I, I understand now that the 7 is coming out and those are the ones that you just pop on your arm mm -hmm. and you can read it and it gives you constant, it's data. It's like science. You're your own science experiment. Try it out, mm -hmm. play with the numbers. So it just lets you know if your blood sugar is out of whack? Or yeah, it's whack. giving you a constant blood glucose reading. So it's continuous and it's kind of funny. It literally put a little device punctured into your skin mm -hmm. and it's just this tiny tiny little wearable thing for two that, weeks right yeah Is that good? no oh. people people do it online all the time they show you and it's just like this weird little like attachment it's very odd and very kind of like modern science but if you're not into that the lumen is a breath piece that will tell you if you're in carb burning or fat burning mm. and carb burning is basically so you breathe on in it kind of like a breathalyzer kind of tool or something like that and it's this little device l-u-m-e-n i think and with that if you're in carb burning that means your body is saturated with glucose and carbohydrate that that's the fuel that's being used in your burning and so some people will hear this and think that that's a weight loss conversation mm. It's a blood sugar management conversation mm -hmm. and understanding that, you know, whether it's breakouts or heavy periods or, you know, you know, if you're, so let me kind of touch on a couple of things. If you are having trouble regulating your system, calming your system, two tablespoons of ground flaxseed a day, shake it into like a, a nut milk or sprinkle it on a, you know, goat yogurt or something, two tablespoons of ground flaxseed a day will help to regulate blood sugar and helps to regulate estrogen. So when you regulate blood sugar, you regulate estrogen. If you're in the age bracket that you're not getting enough estrogen, that means that your bleeds are very light, very pink, very faint. Maybe you have headaches and migraines with your period. That means your body's working really hard to push that period out and there's not enough estrogen then. Wow. Night sweats I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. need to get hot flashes even in younger women, right? Hot flashes and night sweats are 100% blood sugar imbalance. Every time you, 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 if you reel in the blood sugar issue and that's the carbohydrates, if you take, and I love the glucose goddess, she's on Instagram and she has a couple of books. We'll have to check that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love her because she tells daily little easy tactics for regulating your blood sugar. But if you're having trouble pushing out your period, pushing out your bleed, you're having those headaches licorice root. Mm. It's clean, easy. You can get it at any kind of natural food store. Licorice root supplement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, what are you talking about just now? Um, oh, low estrogen and stuff like that. Oh, and insulin resistance. I think this glucose conversation is so important because when people think about blood sugar, I think they're thinking about automatically goes to like obesity or like high and healthy people. No. But for us women, what have we been, been doing since like diet culture has become a thing is suppressing our meals, suppressing our nourishment, suppressing the nutrients. So I think even in my case, because I didn't always eat the best or eat enough of what I needed to and definitely like malnourished myself due to stress or due to just needing to put that focus somewhere else. Yeah. Um, I can totally attest to, I'm sure that my blood sugar through my hormones off of balance. And again, that comes from not having enough 
versus having way too much. Yeah, it's going to spike and drop. And it's the regulation that we want. We want a nice, stable, spiking and dropping causes a problem. If you're not getting enough protein and fats, you're not creating a space where your body can detox. So mm-hmm. you might be producing extra estrogens. Mm-hmm. You might be producing extra various chemicals that are floating around in your system and you're not able to actually detox and slough that out of your body without without healthy amounts of protein and healthy amounts of fat. Mm -hmm. Likewise, I go back to sleep. We have during our sleep cycle from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. is the glycolic wash where we literally have our brain fluid and our spinal fluid that washes in and out grabbing the debris of the day and those chemicals and hormones are part of that conversation I'm always awake at that time wide awake yeah so That's also nice. you know if you yeah. are having trouble with sleep Look at, you know, alcohol consumption, if that's a thing for people, always has the, it's the trickster. It makes you feel tired and sleepy, but really it steals sleep. It steals sleep. 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 Also, not eating anything two to three hours before bedtime is, is a huge, because that spikes your cortisol in the middle of the night, you're awake, you're alert, and then you don't have enough to start your day. So, so those are, those are some tactics, but really... And I, I kind of laughed in the last time Eva saw me speak. It all comes back to sleep, blood sugar, and poop. Mm-hmm. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get it together and, you know, and focus on your wellness in those areas. And there's just a ton of things you can do. Apple cider vinegar helps with blood sugar management, little bits, never straight. People try to drink it straight and I want to just. Yeah, I know. I know they get ulcers, but there's just, you know, eating in a certain order. You know, the traditional order of a meal is the salad course, the main course, then the dessert, if you're going to have it. Well, that's a wonderful structure where it creates a bottleneck of that sugar. So you get that fibrous nest, and then that's going to slow things in the digestive tract. Then you're going to put your proteins and fats on there, and then the carbs and sugars at the end. You know, so it's yeah. just, it's slowing the reception. I think our listeners will really find Yeah, that. glucose goddess. Glucose goddess. Yeah. Okay. And on a tip that I have heard, and this can also, I think, help with stabilizing the blood sugar as well as stabilizing mental health and anxiety is like, if you don't have time to like consistently eat throughout the day, just a handful of nuts or like a spoonful of almond butter yeah. will have you straight. Huge, yeah. huge. And so that helps because people do have the sugar ups and downs where they'll maybe have cravings. But I love healthy fats for a fix between meals. Mm-hmm. A handful of nuts. I like MCT oil in my in my like tea or my mm-hmm. coffee. Sometimes I literally take a little swig of it because maybe I'm not having it with something I want to mix it with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just I can't say enough about healthy fats and proteins. And proteins are the building block. You have to take in a lot of protein, more than you think necessary. Mm -hmm. It's half your body weight Mm -hmm. in ounces of protein daily. And if you do that, you, without going to the gym, will put on muscle. You will lose weight because fat burn Mm -hmm. or muscle burns fat. You will balance your blood sugar just through that mechanism of eating more. You know, I think women have been so scared away from meats, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, a woman should eat a steak. A woman should eat, you know, a whole chicken if she wants to. Because (laughs) I have, have, did you guys ever see uh, the girl interrupted with the chicken under the, I, I kind of have a Brittany Murphy chicken. Like I get in the car and I like think I'm Brittany Murphy with chicken. I'm like the sprouts. (laughs) Take home chicken, yeah. it really doesn't make it home. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> I'm like, it's the cleanest, best tasting it, chicken. Oh, All the chickens. The rotisserie. Eat the leg. Like, no, it's like the cleanest mm-hmm. rotisserie chicken Some ever. Sprouts. Yeah. It's a smaller yeah. bird, which some people complain about, but I'm like, oh, you're honoring no, antibiotics. the antibiotics. Yeah, yeah, you're honoring the fact that this doesn't have steroids or antibiotics. Or- <laughs> let the chicken be a chicken. Let the chicken be a chicken. And then let it be in my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, chicken. Well, how do you... how do you feel about intermittent fasting? I love it. Okay. I love intermittent fasting. I say with with food, with fasting, with movement, be intuitive. Be mm-hmm. in Congress with yourself. So if you are somebody, 
spark moves, right? Your hormones change from week to week. Your stress level changes from night to night. Your sleep, your, you know, like everything in your life is this moving target. So don't get rigid in dogma. And this is one of the things that I get frustrated about, even in my functional medicine cohorts and world, is don't be about dogma. Be, pay attention to you. So I love in, intermittent fasting. I practice it when I can. I'm usually an 11 to 7. So I have my first food at 11 a.m. Mm. I usually have a black coffee with MCT oil at some point mid-morning. With I, fruit, right? No, never Internet fruit. Internet fruit is no me. food. Need to have your afternoon fruit. I do need to have my okay. afternoon fruit, but my first meal of the day, I don't have. I don't have any any fruit or carbs early. Okay. So, be keeping in mind, I'm almost fifty. I'm perimenopausal. Really, kind of getting pretty serious menopausal. It's moving. Okay. So, for me, blood sugar is a huge, huge management issue. Also, we have all the damage I did from all my food addiction years. So I have this easy tipping insulin resistance happening. Mm -hmm. So and I'm like still repairing memory. it. Yeah, I'm Organs. still repairing it. Also, the gut microbiome, the bad guys who love the sugar, they got super activated in that time in my mm -hmm. life. And I, st I have to work to keep them at bay because I can feed sweets or carbs to my system and they go crazy and they produce more cravings and mm -hmm. I can't suppress it. So my management for that is... I intermittent fast until 11 a.m. Okay. So to kind of stave off and keep me in, in that line for a little bit longer, a little MCT oil in my coffee. Okay. For a while, my blood sugar was so out of balance that the black coffee would spike it. And that's without anything. Without that's anything without in it. Coffee. Yeah. So be mindful. Know you. Pay attention. Your body feels yucky when you're spiking your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. So I would be able to do that now, do a little MCT oil, 11 a.m. I'm having fat fiber protein and fiber mm -hmm. is veggie fiber. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm having greens and eggs and for me, avocado or olive mm -hmm. oil. This is your 11 a.m. This is my 11 a.m. Sometimes it's a, a really clean turkey, but mostly it's mm -hmm. eggs. Two to three. I try to eat three, but sometimes that feels like a lot. Yeah. But again... I call it food dosing. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at, well, what do I need to get in? Right. What do I Hit need your to get markers, yeah. the nutrients that you need to get in. Exactly. That's something that we talk a lot about here on the podcast yes. is what's the food, what phase, at what time do you want to eat yes. it? Mm -hmm. Yes. I and love so that you said the bit about coffee, about how at one point you couldn't have it. It was really spiking your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. It's just very important for our listeners to always know that there's going to, going to be different times and phases that you're at in your life and to be intuitive, yeah. listen to those, get yourself stable, and you can always have things back. Yeah. Allergies that you were once allergic to yes. can all of a sudden change for you later on it just by you reestablishing your and microbiome. It, it, you know, said listen to yourself and it'll stabilize mm -hmm. and isn't that what a relationship does yeah when when our our partner doesn't feel heard and we listen to them mm -hmm. it stabilizes the chemistry of the relationship mm -hmm. again with yourself i love a good connecting yeah. allergy so and so then mid-afternoon i always crave something i feel like i'm on a sugar chase so for me i have a handful of nuts first because i'm going to put something in my system to block and slow the carbohydrate load. Mm -hmm. Then I have my fruit and fruit's great because nice. it makes me feel like I'm having something sweet from the body's response to it. Now, do I think it's cheesecake? No, <laughs> I'm like, but it takes my body to the place where it's resolved mm -hmm. and it's satisfied. We're not thinking about cheesecake all day long. Yeah. <laughs> In the worst case scenarios, I've had two pieces of fruit. It's right. really weird how a handful of nuts and a piece or two of fruit will satiate yeah. a true afternoon sugar craving. Mm -hmm. And then evening, fat, fiber, protein, again, veggie mm -hmm. fiber, of course. And I throw in a little resistant starch. So a resistant starch, we know is sweet potatoes, plantains, but also if you will let your rice pool, the metab the um, molecular state of the rice mm -hmm. actually turns it into a resistant starch. I love how food 
So sciency, how you cook it completely changes everything. Which how your body digests. Asia does really well yeah. on rice and all of America doesn't is the mm -hmm. way we cook it. We cook it wrong. Yes. Yeah. It is a blue, blue but, zone. But to, to all of that, to go back, there are days that I wake up ravenous. And if I don't pay attention to that and tend to it, we have a cortisol spike. Mm -hmm. And then we have belly fat and we have inflammation. So pay attention nurture it, give it healthy resolution. And, and if you give it healthy resolution, then you don't have a pendulum response and you're not hitting the cheesecake at three o'clock. So have you heard before that so I've read this online in a whole bunch of spots that if you don't eat 30 to 120 minutes before your before waking up, it'll spike your cortisol or mess up your hormones. So 30 to 120 minutes after you wake up well, yeah waking up, then waking up. Yeah, so within a half an hour to two hours from waking up you got to put something in your system um especially if you are going to be drinking coffee this is just something me and eva have yeah. heard elsewhere because over time doing it like that skipping breakfast straight to coffee don't eat yeah most of the day that does cause the adrenal fatigue right yeah. And so this is where we go back to personalized nutrition, mm -hmm. right? So there's a huge movement that says, don't skip how mm -hmm. to eat right away. And then there's a whole movement that says, you know, do this. Yeah. I will say that people who are waiting and shifting all their food till very late, that is problematic because it's interrupting sleep. Mm -hmm. So we've got yeah. the intermittent fasters that think that we can push food into the very end of the day. And that's not good. Different bodies are going to have different cortisol responses. Mm -hmm. So this is what I share is what I do with me. Super different. Pay attention. When I'm, when I'm having that response, I tend to it. Mm -hmm. I feed it. Mm -hmm. I give it what it's asking for. I know also because of my spiked blood sugar tendencies, because of my food addiction tendencies, I know that if I start feeding the machine really early, that I kind of things go in and I have a hard time throughout the day. Mm. So having the nuts is the way I fix that on a day when I feel my chemistry is a little off. Yeah. I'll do the nuts. I'll do a little apple cider vinegar. I'll kind of push it out. And then, you know, I might be having breakfast at 930 commonly, right? Yeah, and it depends. And it depends feel? on my hormones and my phase too. Cool. So I think um, our listeners will can get started on fixing their sleep, paying more attention to their blood glucose. We're definitely going to post that little device that you told yeah. us about. Yeah. I'm going to try that out. Are you going to yeah. give it to me, Eva? Probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're all over the place. Continuous glucose monitors. Anything else that you want to leave the listeners with? Just thank you so much. This has been so lovely and you guys are doing such a great job and I'm really flattered to be here. And guys, we love yeah, you already. Just, yeah, I'm just so, yeah, I'm, yeah. And we've learned so much from just, you know, the differences between the Western healthcare approach versus more functional integrative approach, the types of labs and the testing that is at play in your world and you know just we're so glad to have gotten to know your heart mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. and your life's work and your calling thank yeah. you so much if yeah. our listeners have any more questions for you in the future i'm sure we can have katie on again in the future so please. And call to action for this episode for you guys is go check out katie on her website she does offer a consultation yeah Free of charge for anyone who's interested in her program and her coaching, wellness training. So I would definitely recommend doing that if that's something that you guys have been looking into for yourselves, wanting to try. And yeah, uh, where can our listeners find you? Tell us about your podcast, your website, your Instagram, all of that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, to further that, absolutely. The first one hour session for everyone is free. And a that's lot of, amazing. and my, my goal is that everybody walks away with tangible something that they can take away and use. So even if it's just that one call, so there's that. And then my website is Katie Rose dash coaching. It's hard to get her URL. Everybody knows that, but it's K A T Y is how I spell my name. K A T Y R O S E like the flower dash coaching.com. My Instagram is open to the public and it's just a mishmash of things I love. It's not very well groomed or attractive, but it's the <laughs> truth. And it's at a smidge a day. 
Same for Facebook, same for YouTube, which I don't put a lot on there, but I have a little. And then my podcast is A Smidge a Day with Katie Rose Coaching, and my color is orange if that helps people okay. find me. So awesome. <laughs> well, we'll post all of that too in our show notes yeah. so that they can have an easier time finding you. And thank you so much, Katie, for this conversation. Thank you. For everything that you shared with us and our audience. Eva, thank you for finding Katie. <laughs> I love alignment. It's good. It just comes to you. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Alina, Eva, thank you. You're the best. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Bye. This show is intended for inspiration and entertainment and is not meant to replace your physician's medical advice. Music by Moon Blue. Editing by Alina Felton. Mm-hmm.